Hey everyone, it's Blue Lizard Jello, and welcome back to Blue Play's Scholar of the First Sin. We're back in Shulva, and actually even before I grab that item, I have to do what I normally do, show off our gear. Gear is essentially the same, except, look at this, our very first plus 10 weapon. I went back to Black Gulch, I actually joined the company, oh shoot, am I still in the Covenant? No, I did get rid of the Covenant. Wow, I joined the, the Company of Champions Covenant so I could farm the Tar Pit Monsters, the Parasites, down in Black Gulch. Got enough Titanite Chunks, and I already had a slab from trading with the Crows and from the one in Force of Fallen Giants. So I now have a plus 10 weapon. So this is doing 562 damage, you can see in the top right there. Anyway, here's my stats as well. I did put a few more points into Endurance and into Strength. So we are doing pretty well on this character, I think. And I still am digging this armor set. If you guys have suggestions on fashion souls that you want to see, keep in mind, I want it to be heavy, but not too heavy. And I want it to look good. All right, here we go. Old Growth Bomb. So Old Growth Bomb, I'm actually going to take a look at that real quick. Because I don't remember what each of the bombs do. I know they increase, they temporarily increase one of your stats for a little while. So Old Growth Bomb is for strength. Cool. Cool. So let's see how we do. I, I haven't actually done this DLC at this level. When I did the Everything Possible series and when I even did my blind playthrough, I was at least so level 150. So I am significantly lower. We're just going to charge this guy. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm not going to charge him. We're going to play smart. Going to lure some away. Good. And we also got that pillar raised now. Oh, it didn't kill ya. I thought it might. Oh, hey, no, stop. Okay, a few tips. A few tips that people have been giving me. The great sword is going to go off in the direction that I'm pointing, which means if I whoop, let me practice here. Excuse me. That almost killed me. Anyway, what it means is that if I start the attack, but I, but I change directions. Let me try again. Then I can actually change that. So I can actually manually aim this to a degree. It's not it's not foolproof, but it does work to an extent. So I can use that to my advantage. The other thing is, I've been told again and again to keep this dagger in my offhand. The problem is, I'm not using it. Like, I could have just used it there to actually save myself some stamina, but I neglected. So I'm going to try and focus on that a little bit more. Also, one-handed definitely has a pretty sweet moveset. I really actually enjoy the R2 of the one-handed. And I think that's going to come in come in handy here. Wow. You know what? I wonder. They have some really good poise. So I'm thinking, what if I put the stone ring on in lieu of what? You know what? Souls really aren't my biggest priority right now. Let's give the stone ring a shot and see if that's going to be enough to actually knock them out of their animations. And I should have... Oh, hey, that knocked him off. I should have actually rode that up to get the item that's on there, but we'll do that in a second here. Alright, ready? Let's let this guy attack. And then... <laughs> Alright, let's just... No. No, the stone ring is not going to cut it. Stone... No. Well, actually, I wanted that to go down. So, let's run over here. And just kill him. Oh, you're not dead. Wow. You guys hurt. You guys hurt a lot. I think these are a bunch of life gems, though. Five of them. Very good. So the stone ring is really not not my cup of tea. It's not going to do it. Might as well... Although I could switch it out for the ring of seal protection, which I might do. Again, souls at this point are kind of becoming trivial very quickly. And we can always do farming sessions with it later on. And that was too far. <laughs> Why'd I jump? <laughs> Whoops. Shall we try that again? With much less jumping off of the building. I think so. I think it's worth doing again. 
Jiminy Crickets. <laughs> as soon as I hit L3, I knew. Hey. I knew where that was going. And it wasn't any place good. And you just, you don't have to do that. You don't. You can just do that. Very simple. Dark Quartz Ring plus three. I've actually never used any of the Quartz Rings that I can remember. Now we could take that pedestal down or we can just drop down here. Take a little bit of damage. Nothing major. Let's see. Are we able to get the drop on this guy? Sure can. Alright, Lance Bro, let's go. What? What are you doing? That was awful aim on your part. You can't get mad at me. That was your foolish mistake. Got the longbow plus seven. Great. That is actually one of the reasons I haven't upgraded any bow. It's because you can get some pre-upgraded items in the DLC area. So we got our longbow. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and we're not going to take on that building yet. Could hit that with a bow. All right. Now... We want to be careful to hit them and not these pustules. So the overhand... Oh, hey! Overhand is going to be good. It's going to be very good. Here we go. Alright, you. You missed? Well, you didn't miss. You hit me once. But I hit you for a lot more damage. to the top here. Should be another bug that lands. There's a poison... Oh, there he is. He actually climbs up. Okay. So we've got a ring for better poison resistance. We might actually end up using that in Harvest Valley. I've never done Shelva or the Crown of the Sunken King DLC prior to going to Harvest Valley, but that could be really good. We get the drop on that guy that way, but we actually want to go up above. So we're going to go in here, get our golden fruit bomb. What is golden fruit? That's faith. Hey, where do I go? Where do I go upstairs? Or am I being crazy? Am I being crazy? I thought, I thought, I thought. No, I think I'm being crazy. Let me let me check something. I'm sorry. Sorry about this. Let oh goodness, stairs. Why are they so hard? If you're wondering if I have this much trouble with stair stairs in real life, yes, yes I do. Okay, there's nothing there. It's another building I'm thinking of that has an item on the ledge. It's been a while since I've run the DLC. It's been a long while. Okay, watch this guy. And. We will raise this. Oh, come on. Wow, he didn't even stun with two R1s. They have impressive poise. There's the bridge we needed. And finish. Gotcha. For you got me. And if you really need to, you can hit this. This will actually extend that platform. You really don't need it, though. It's completely jumpable. If you're just not confident in your jumping abilities, then you can raise it if need be. Head down there momentarily. All right, more bugs. Be careful of the more bugs. No item out there. The other Ah, darn it. I got trapped and had to roll through it. them. Got some blackweed bomb. Blackweed is... Oh, I'm not even going to pretend like I remember. You're not dead. Get out of here. Blackweed is what? Blackweed's intelligent. Oh, oh, hey, 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 hey. All right. So we have golden is faith. Black is intelligence. 
Old growth is strength. There's some more golden fruit, so that's faith. I don't know why I want to actually learn these, but I do. But I do. Alright. Oh! Doggone it. Gotta actually get a running start on that. I could even jump if I really had to, but the last time I jumped didn't end so well for me. Now, I need my fire bombs equipped. I did buy lots and lots of fire bombs. Not black fire bombs, unfortunately, because I don't have access. Where are my fire bombs? There they are. Because I don't have access to Iron Keep yet. So I don't have Magarold available. Come on. Too high. Gotta go low. Gotta go low. What what are you aiming at? Oh, this damage is pathetic. Hi, Karumba. This damage is... You can shoot them with a bow. It's a little bit easier. And they don't even drop anything really good. Oh, throwing knives. And I already bought 99. Got him. Don't fall down here. Alright. From here, this next gauntlet can be very rough. Got our magic bolts, ignoring that archer for now. We want to come over here and get our sanctum mace. That should have been a life gem, but it wasn't. There's my life gems. Oh, hey, we got two of them coming. All right. Bad mistake on your part. And bait another attack, if you don't mind. I love that follow-up. Turn around and just heave it over your shoulder. It's really good. Got our dried root. Dried root. If any of you have actually found a good purpose for dried root, let me know. Because it is sl painfully slow. HP regeneration. I mean, it's jokingly slow. Alright, here's what we're going to do. We're going to run past this guy. Get this archer. Uh-oh. Get out of here. Heal up. The other... Ar oh, he didn't die. And he just healed with an Estus. Great. Here we go. Backstab a Reno on him. Not hitting any of the pillars just yet. I want these guys to die first. Okay. I'm also going to ignore items until it's clear. Oh, hey. Running R1 is pretty good. Because it does that. Of course. Why didn't I think of that? That's brilliant. Alright. I should have been using the one-handed here, though. That would have made that a lot easier. But it still worked for me. Over there is the secret section. And you have to get to it by shooting. That pillar just above where the great sword thimble is in the bottom left thimble symbol symbol all right now we can start raising platforms and collecting items there's some twinkling titanites Lloyd's talisman there is nothing on this pillar I don't know why it exists I truly truly do not all right, now from here, um, but um, but um, can I get that? I feel like I'm gonna hit my head there. No, let's go, let's go smarter. Now let's go here, and then we'll just jump right at the pillar for the Dark Knight stones. Good, good. I have to remember the order that I've done these in. All 
Alright, now we're going to go through this building where there should still be a knight waiting for us. Unless he was... Nope, he actually got triggered early. He was one of the two that came at us earlier. Alright, so we've got that. And now we have this one coming up. And you have an item as well, yes? No. No, there's that one. Which means I should have actually... I need to equip either... Uh, you know, I can use fire bombs. Fire bombs are... They should work. Should be able to aim this manually and hit it. Sure enough. There's our Thunder Quartz Ring plus three. Really good lightning defense. And now from here... Don't think these pillars actually have anything on them. I think they're solid. Uh, actually, this one might. This one might. Well, let's take some fall damage. No, you don't. Does this one? Or are you solid as well? I think you're solid as well. Oh, the items over there are just throwing knives, so I can't get them. Okay, so this up here, if you want just a shortcut to the next bonfire, you can raise all these platforms. You can run down there. There is a poison spitting statue that I'm going to just ignore. But from here, you can just very carefully run all the way to here. I'm going to light this. I'm not going to rest, though, because I do not want everything respawning yet. All right, we're going to take some fall damage. It is necessary. And now I do... Oh, I wanted to use it. I wanted to use a life gem, not an Estus. But we are going to go up here. This might take me a moment, but I am going to try to hit that hidden obelisk. <coughs> so I can show you this secret area. Which means I need... Um, do, 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 do. let's use the bow. Do I have any normal arrows? I have iron arrows. That should work. Alright, now, you have to get this just right. Yeah, see, it, it has a very wonky hitbox, and I don't think it's very doable up here. In fact, I believe down here you have a much better angle somewhere. Maybe it's over here. Yeah, there. You can kind of see it just over those poison statues' heads. It's still not easy, but... There we go. Nope. Stop, stop, stop. Go. Wait, what? Where did you... Oh, you appear over there. My bad. I'm a goofy goober right now. Torches. And now we have all these... We are not going to worry about them. If I get poisoned like that, I get poisoned. But we get the Notched Whip plus 7. Promised Walk of Peace. So if you want to uh, paralyze people almost in their tracks, there you go. And we have this guy. Who does absolutely nothing when you hit it. Unless you hit it with a particular item. Maybe an item that we just found in this room. Maybe, like the Notched Whip. And even though I don't have the stats to use it... When I whip him, he lets out this gas, and you hear that noise. Well, let's take a look at our greatsword's durability after this. Our durability is now at 70. 70 out of 70, which means this crazy-looking tree heals you. Well, it doesn't heal you, but it restores your durability of your weapons. A weird mechanic. Absolutely. Oh, you had to hit me, huh? A weird mechanic, but you know what? Very useful if you don't want to rest at bonfires. So there you go. Alright. So this area is clear. We got that bonfire. Now we're going to push forward. Oh, I can't even... Oh, I can't go this way. What am I talking about? And now we're going to be heading into almost the temple area. By the way, there's not going to be a boss fight in this episode. And the reason is the DLC is kind of laid out a bit strangely 
as far as bosses go. You typically do most of the DLC without encountering a boss, and then you'll find two right towards the end, and then the one optional. And this area is no exception. So the way this works is you basically get to the end, you fight Elena, and then you fight Sin right away. Speaking of Sin... How you doing, Sin? Good to see you. I appreciate the help. And then the optional boss is going to be in the Cave of the Dead, which is... See that bridge right above me? That'll lead us to the Cave of the Dead to fight the Gang Squad boss fight. Which is an interesting, albeit annoying, boss. Focus Souls, this is kind of like a laser beam of sorcery. Can be pretty difficult to use. And now let's go ahead and head inside. We have some new enemies we're going to run into. A lot of items, a lot of secrets in this DLC. I won't even call it DLC anymore, this area. We'll just, we'll just call it area. We don't have the key for this yet. Uh, I love the music too. Very, very... Very ambient. Now, you are going to run into these. These are switches that will control a nearby door. Some of them will be obvious like this. Some will be on the ceiling. Some will be recessed into the wall. You just have to be observant and really, really keep your eye out for them. Okay. Let me tell you about this next section and how long it took me to figure out what's going on. You see these ghosts in front of me. They can hurt us. We cannot hurt them unless you actually destroy their possessed armor that you can see glowing right in front of them. It's not always going to be right in front of them. Sometimes you will have to do a little bit of searching. But because we have... Well, I actually unequipped it. Because we have bows and we have arrows, we can take them out from range, which will make them vulnerable. So, for example, if I hit this armor set, you can see this guy is now... Let's just call him, I guess, normal or exposed... And now we can actually deal damage to him. Same with this one. Well, that wall actually didn't need to be hit. That was that was just my choice. Let's go ahead and get his attention. Just so he'll come up here. And then... Have him come up here. We don't want to fight too many of them at the same time. They're not terribly difficult. But... They do some damage, as you can see. And there are a lot of treasures in this room. Oof. Wow. I'm, I'm very amazed that these enemies are not being stunned by double R1s. Alright. Just because I don't know what the mimic situation is like in these areas, I am going to go ahead and hit chests as I come to them. Now let's see if anything's changed. Destructive Great Arrows, that's the same. Because you used to get a piece of the Onion set. Yep, there's the Katarina Helm, so that's the same. I think you also get a Slab. I'm not hitting the chest like I just said I was. Wow, that didn't take long to forget. A Soul Vessel. So we can reallocate our stats if we wish. Old Growth Bomb, and that is our Strength Bomb again. And slab. Okay, so that room looks to be identical. Now this room has a trap. You can see that raised button right there. And you can actually use this to your advantage if you're careful. And if you time it well. Let's see. Okay, got some damage. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Nice, a twofer. Made another attack. Come on. The R1 to R2 is really good on the great sword. I am quite the fan. So there was the arrow trap that just got activated. And here we have we have a sorcerer. We have another knight right there. She's gonna start casting hexes at us. And then also up in that wheel that we're gonna rotate, there's an archer. So you have to be wary of that. And this right here, this is another one of the doors that can be activated with a switch. And the switch... Oh! Trap chest! Oh! Absolutely forgot that was a trap chest. Dried roots, what a waste. I caramba. Alright, 
Can I use firebombs on these? Maybe? If I just aim a little higher? Yeah, I can. Good. That'll keep me from having to switch. Plus, I bought so many of them, I might as well. Oh, here we go. Twinkling Titanite times 5, Petrified Dragonbone times 3. This is good because I do want to use the Pursuers, not the Pursuers, the Sinner's Lost Sword, or the Lost Sinner's Sword, because it's another Ultra Great Sword, but it has a pretty, pretty cool moveset. And I want to give it a shot, but I don't want to trade out a plus 10 Great Sword for anything other than either a plus 10 or a plus 5 weapon. It just seems like that would be, that would be silly. Alright, I want to go for her... So she's going to use these Pursuer-like spells. Alright. Oh, that almost hit. Can I finish you? Nope. Can I finish you now? Nope. Oh, no! Oof, that hurts. That spell hurts a lot. Should be good now. There we go. Wow, even you take two hits. That's actually kind of surprising. But you might have guessed it. This wheel does rotate like wheels ought to do. Just using this button. And we're going to just ignore him. He is going to start taking shots at us. No big deal. We just have to rotate it two more times. There's one. And there's two. We're going to be picking up Flynn's Ring here soon, which is really good for light builds if you keep your endurance low. It is not going to be good for us because our endurance is starting to get up there. It actually goes based on your total equipment burden. Pair powder, good to have. And this is going to be open from the other side. And from here, you can drop down or you can jump. And I'm going to choose to jump because there's more secrets down here to get. Including, like I said, switches sometimes hidden recessed in walls. We'll have to hit that with the one, hit that one with an arrow. But we also have one way up there. I don't think I'm getting a firebomb that high. So instead, we will switch to our short bow. And you can see there's nothing opening here. So instead, what we want to do is go hit the switch we saw at the top of the stairs, and then we'll find out where that door just got opened. And be ready for an onslaught. Be ready. Can I get the backstab, please? Awesome. Really good damage on the backstab. Dragon Charm. That's a shame. But if you can get these enemies' attentions, and then you can run up here, there's a switch on the floor. Now watch what happens. Love it. Absolutely love that they fall for that. Can I get you two? Nah, just missed. That's alright. No problem getting the backstab. I will take it gladly. And now we just ignore that switch and we're all set. Soul of a hero. Human effigy. And you can see this right here. This door was shut until we hit the switch that was up on that wall. Very cool. Not a mimic. And inside there's a really interesting weapon. Oh, good. Twingly Titanite, more Petrified Dragon Bones. But for you light characters using especially dexterity-based weapons, really, really fun. I like how I hit one chest and not others. It, it's just so, so backwards. The Puzzling Stone Sword. I will show this off just very quickly. And look at the stats. You only need seven strength and six dexterity, but it starts with an S scaling in dexterity. It's absurd, but here it is. So R1, 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 and R2. Yeah, it's a whip. It extends. There's the two-handed R1, two-handed R2. Pretty cool. Nice flourish there. I like it. I say I like it. I've never used it in actual combat. 
but in theory, I really like it. Oh, hey, what? Good thing we have a couple of repair powders. We're going to need them soon. We could go that way. That's to progress. This is to go get the Flynn's Ring. Ooh, hey. That damage from the fall. How about it? Ow. Oh, hey, there's a lot of you. I don't know if there used to be that many. I, ah, uh, ah. Uh. No, no, no. And you can stun me? Really? You're bugs! Oh boy, this is getting dangerous. This is getting dangerous. We're gonna have to... We're gonna have to line them up. We're gonna have to line them up. Poison throwing knives. And you know what? Speaking of lining them up, I'll take that. Not really sure how one, that one survived that was right in the middle of the attack. I can't believe an R1 does not kill these guys. Ah! Uh, come on, get a twofer. Here we go, almost clear. Quick, get it off. And how... Oh, you jerk. There we go. I should have been using the dagger, shouldn't I, for the finishes. I'm such a goober. I really am. Awesomeizer, <laughs> you had a great tip. And I, I've put it in the offhand. I just haven't actually used it at all. Ay, caramba. All right. Dung pie. But the crazy thing about Flynn's Ring that we're going to be picking up, if your equipment burden, your your total equipment load, I should say, is low enough, you can get up to plus 50 attack rating, which is huge. That is a gigantic increase. Let's see if we get anything out of it. So there's Flynn's. So with the Ring of Blades, we're getting 400 plus 162. If we switch it to Flynn's... Nah, see, we dropped 12 points because we're too high. It still is an increase, I believe. So right now, that's at one... Yeah, it's only an 8-point difference, though, so it's really, really not very good. Again, though, if you have a light build... Excellent ring to have. Couple this with the Ring of Blades plus two, and your your damage will just skyrocket. All right, there's going to be a quick cut here, guys. Sorry, well, actually, a quick cut in just a second. Sorry about that. All right, I'm back. Not that you're going to actually notice anything but a quick cut there. So, what we have, we have a bit of a gauntlet coming up. We have these spikes that are going to do minimal damage to us, but they're going to do a lot of durability damage to our equipment. We have a chest up there that we can't get to yet, obviously. We have a sorcerer that I completely forgot about that you can snipe from here. In fact, I'm probably going to go that route. But we are nearing the end of the episode. There is a bonfire that we're going to reach, and that's going to call it for today. But we need to get there first. A little bit higher to get over that bridge. Oh, the damage. It's just not good. That's what you get for having a short bow unupgraded with minimum, minimum dexterity. Two more ought to do it. And there we go. Good. Now, you can see the sword over here to the left. It is transparent. This is another ghost. There's going to be more of them. Oh, geez, careful. There's going to be more of them, and we don't have access to the armor because the armor is actually up in that room. So we have to get up on that bridge to get to the armor, but we're not going to do that this episode. Our only goal here is going to be to get to the bonfire, the hidden bonfire that a lot of people actually, from what I understand, haven't found. So we're going to run past everything. We're probably being pursued. But from here... Oh, shoot. I shouldn't have gone that far. Quickly. Quickly. Uh, okay, now. Now I'm in trouble because they're blocking the stairs. Ow. Actually, the damage isn't that bad. Well, damage wasn't that bad. We don't want to go too far down here. So, wow, over my head. Good. Here we go. Now we should have pretty easy access. So we head back up. I guess while we're at it, we will hit this switch just because we're here. Nope, nope. Wrong button. There, I used the dagger, finally. That'll open up that door, which is very important. You don't want to forget that. But, 
this jump right here is made possible because we hit that switch. There was a stone door here, door here previously, and now there's not. So there's the bonfire. We'll skip that to get this item. The Sanctum Crossbow. You're going to see that in action by the enemies here momentarily. But that's going to wrap it up. That's the first part of the Crown of the Sunken Kings DLC. I hope you enjoyed. This is not a spoiler-free playthrough, so if there's something you don't want me to miss, or if there's something you want me to showcase, let me know and I'll do my best. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.